One of the surest signs that winter is over is the flowering of blackthorn. Be sprinkling half green hedges with flakes and sprays of snow, as the poet Christina Rossetti described it. And because blackthorn is a low growing bush that extends vigorously by means of underground runners and sometimes covers a lot of ground and there are no leaves to get in the way of the massed flowers, the hedges are indeed a snowfall of white blossom at this time of year. Every bit as magical as cherry blossom in its modest way. The black in the name blackthorn probably refers to the dark colour of the bark uh, by comparison or in contrast with uh, the much paler colour of hawthorn or whitethorn. And you'll notice that hawthorn gets its leaves before it comes into flower, whereas blackthorn flowers first. In Irish, blackthorn is the drian, uh, a name which occurs quite commonly uh, in place names. Uh, nowhere more appropriately than the townland of Dryna uh, between Derrynlock and Bura, which is Drynoch, a black thorny place. Its thorny, low growing habit makes a very valuable contribution to making a hedge stock proof. But its tendency to wander out into the field, as you can see it's beginning to do here, means that you'll have to keep, uh, keep an eye on it or it will take over half the field at the expense of the grazing. Blackthorn is a typical member of the rose family. The flowers have five sepals, five free petals alternating with these, and twenty or so long stamens arranged in a circle around the rim of a little well formed by the fused bases of the sepals. A club-like style and stigma rise up out of this well in which the ovary that will become the familiar slow after fertilization nestles. The conspicuous snowy bushes attract multitudes of insects, especially flies and bees, and particularly solitary bees of the genus Andrina. Arriving in search of the nectar that accumulates in the little well formed by the sepals and for the abundant pollen. The flowers are protogynous, the stigma maturing before the pollen is shed, which favours cross-pollination, but should this fail, self-fertilisation can occur. Blackthorn was considered sufficiently important to merit inclusion among the third rank of trees and shrubs of economic importance in the laws of early Ireland, uh, in the company of elder, whitebeam, arbutus and aspen, uh, juniper and spindle. And in the old Irish tale, The Death of Fergus, there is a wonderful dissertation on the burning qualities of the different timbers, in which we read that the blackthorn is a wanderer, a timber no craftsman will burn, in its bounteous branches, scanty though they be, birds in their flocks warble which tells us, I think, in a simple, succinct sort of way, three important things about blackthorn. Blackthorn is a wanderer, as it clearly is, the way it spreads out into the field over time. A wood no craftsman will burn could be because it was considered unlucky to burn blackthorn, but also because it was too useful to burn. All sorts of little useful items could be made from the timber, uh, most familiarly uh, walking sticks and shillelaghs. In his branches, birds in their flocks warble is clearly a reference to the importance of blackthorn for biodiversity and not just for birds. It is a food plant for several dozen species of insects, including numerous species of moths. The fruit of the blackthorn is the familiar sloe, designed to appeal to the taste buds of birds, but more especially but of mammals such as badgers and foxes and indeed to our own taste buds. Slow jelly, which is the strained fruit pulp mixed with the fruit pulp of crab apple, is one of the superior preserves. And slows added to sugar and gin, as many of you will know, makes a fine liqueur. But only if you have the patience and self-control to add a further essential ingredient, which is thyme. 
because it takes several years for the added sweetness to ferment and for the extraordinary flavour of slow gin uh, to, uh, to develop properly. But there's a much quicker recipe that you might be interested to try, and that is for the excellent kissel that slows can make. The kissel uh, is a Russian dessert. You pick your slows and stew them uh, and puree them after you have strained away uh, the, the, the stones, and then uh, add sugar to sweeten it. Then you thicken with corn flour, or you might like to try plain yogurt, and you can add other fruit purees and juices if you want to vary the flavour. It's delicious, it's different, it's dead easy to make, and it's dead cheap. Michael Longley wrote a wonderful poem about Blackthorn, which is just four lines long. A bouquet for my fifties, these flowers without leaves, like Easter snow, hailstones clustering at Dalygon. From the difficult thicket, a walking stick in bloom, then astringency, the blackthorn and its smoky plum.